fantastic as I can see a group of people wanting to help this park out. Does, does everyone know, like, the, kind of the basic history of this park? I mean, I don't know, like, you know, when it was uh, established necessarily, but my recollection as a, you know, long time, not resident of the borough, but long time, you know, resident of this area, Middletown Township, is that this was sort of a delinquent park for decades. Um, I had friends who would talk about getting stoned in this park, you know, after school every day. And, and so it was really, on the one hand, it's a nice green space, but on the other hand, it was also, um, you know, a place for, for kids to get into trouble. And, and it was not well managed for many, many years. And so I guess it was about eight years ago. Is that right? More or less, Carol? Eight or yeah, 10 years ago? Now. The, when they when they really renovated this, yeah. So so none of this hardscaping was here. I mean, literally, you went down, you know, that little trail over there, and a, maybe a set of rickety steps, and you were in the park. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I guess the borough got together. They got a grant. Um, they hired. Um, I think it was Robert Lynn, architects, and. Um, they created this beautiful kind of overlook. They created the path down there. They put the bridge in. I mean, they and then the borough and perhaps a landscape or, uh, landscaper crew came in, and they did take out a bunch of vines. They took out all this debris that was in the creek, um, you know, man-made debris as well as natural debris, so that the creek would run more smoothly. And they really cleaned this place up. To, to what it is today. And, and the borough is sort of managing it as part of their public works department. Um, but the public works department does the trash cleanup and they clean up after all the events. And they, I mean, they do, and they, you know, paint the lines on the roads, right? So their focus is not really about green spaces um, necessarily, although it's part of what they do. Um, and I've worked with members of that crew um, at the Minshaw house trying to fix that up last year. So they're a great group of guys, no doubt. Um, and actually we miss Ralph um, Del Rosa, um, who is the outgoing head of the Public Works Department. And now we have Mike Green, um, who's the new, the incoming. So um, I've been in conversation with him as well as Robin to organize this day. and. Uh, He's like thrilled. <laughs> He's just really happy that we're here. Um, so that's kind of the background. So this tool is called a weed wrench. It's not in production anymore, but there are other companies making them. Uh, I don't have any names off the top of my head. But the principle is that you get a, a small tree in here, and then this squeezes shut. I can't, I'll actually have to do it. And then you can pull the tree out which uh, a forester developed this and part of the uh, motivation was to reduce the use of herbicides for controlling invasives in forests. You see how the mechanism actually works. So you get the jaws around and then as you pull this back, it clamps on the tree and then this base is a fulcrum. Nice. We're just pulling the tree out. Really nice. No herbicide, guaranteed death. One less invasive tree in the world. Uh, Two Packard and Robin LeSurgeon and I went to the Shade Tree Commission at their last monthly meeting to find out what they'd done about the spotted lantern fly infestation. They're more concerned about it on this side of Baltimore Pike. I don't really? know. Yes, apparently it's really bad over here. It was really bad in, in my backyard. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you guys are in the... Yeah. the heavy duty zone and it seemed like this was a really good place to start to find out where if there's a center for the infestation and really the shade tree commission doesn't have jurisdiction over anything but the trees that are in the right of way that's the little, little grass strip between the sidewalk and the street okay. those trees um, the shade tree commission has surveyed not a spotted lantern, unfortunately. Um, and so this seemed like a really excellent place to start, and that's why we're starting here. Yeah, that's a good. 
So are they laid in lines? That looks like it, yeah. Ah. But that just doesn't look like the yeah. other thing that looked like it's, it's the older. mud spatter. It's more yeah, like a piece older. of gum. Um, this like is older. Push. Yeah, they, um, they're they smoother when they're newer. Ah. Uh, yeah, this is... Ah, uh, yeah, eggies. Oh, they're all over me now. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was easy. Yeah, getting... That's what I understood. Getting them off was easy, and it was like... Okay. I'm wondering if the patches that we're seeing oh, are ones see. where someone else has scraped them. I want to get these. Oh, that's um, What this park requires more than anything is um, sort of continual maintenance of the invasive plants, um, especially the vines. So if we look over here on this maple, um, it's mostly English ivy, uh, which actually isn't originally from England, it's from Europe, but okay. Um, you know, people bring it in, they think it's great, they put it on their hillside, and before you know it, you know, it ends up over here. And nobody really notices it. Nobody knows what to do about it. So we're going to be working mostly with, with just cutting the vine as it grows from the ground and it's, going to, it's growing up the tree. All we're going to do is cut the vine at the base of the tree. Um, so if this is the base of the tree and the tree has, you know, undulating bark, you can bet that that vine has grown in the crevice of the bark. So we've got a few tools, and if you brought tools, that's great. Thank you very much uh, for doing that. If you have a set of pruners, you can get this little hook of your pruner carefully in underneath that vine and just pull it out and cut it. What you don't want to do is start hacking away at the bark to get to the vine. So this is, you know, can be a little bit like surgery, and I'll demonstrate what I mean. So this vine is actually coming from here and on the ground. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can go about dealing with this. Can everyone hear me, by the way? Yes. Hear me? Okay. So I could just try to pull this a little bit, even on the ground, and, and cut, which is great. But more than likely, this has created multiple other um, leaders, if you will. So even if I just cut that, I haven't gotten everything, unfortunately. But as you can see, like this is really embedded in here. And if I take my knife and kind of peel it away, That. Then I can come in and really cut that away. Or, like I said, with this little hooked part, I can get under there and cut. And again, we would like to, what we're doing is trying to free these trees of being strangled. And uh, by cutting these vines where we're doing, we're, we're accomplishing. Yeah, it's a nice tool, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. I mean, that, that gives people an idea. That's how much pressure. Did you hear that? Yeah, how much pressure was on that? maybe an hour, an hour and change, and um, a lot of headway, and you know, this is only four trees, but you can see how much strangulation is going on here, because, you know, what seems like a harmless ground cover 
um, is not managed. So it turns into a big problem and we're out here at least making a small dent and uh, super happy about it. It's hard work, let me tell you. But um, I think the trees are gonna benefit. This hillside is somewhat precarious, so the trees are serving a very important purpose of holding the soil um, and the road. Essentially helping to hold the road up. So that's why we wanna protect these trees. Um, they are not native to our region. They are from Europe. It's a Norway maple. They are on the invasive species list for Pennsylvania. But again, they're serving a purpose for us right now, and we do want to protect them. So, hope to see everyone out next time we're doing this. They will, there will be more activities in the Cleveland Park.